I love K-pop. 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 Yeah, so my two favorite K-pop groups are 21 and EXO. Um, I just, I feel like with 21, I really like their, their style of music. I felt like their music was very different from every other K-pop group's music, which is kind of what made them stand out between every other K-pop group. And I think they had really good stage presence and, you know, they always sung live and, you know, they were always very charismatic and they really showed that they loved singing and they love being artists and then they also participated in writing their music and producing their music which I really did like and then in terms of EXO um, I'm someone who likes vocals and I love singing so you know just I just really love how well EXO sings live and how well they can harmonize together as well as dance. So, okay. I'm really into girl groups so my favorite girl group is Mamamoo. I really love it because they have the best vocalist and um, their music is really, they mix virtual and modern music together, which is really interesting. Also, I just enjoy their love performance. So in 2013, 2014, I first discovered K-pop um, watching a YouTube video and hearing a song that I didn't realize, or that I didn't recognize what the lyrics were. And so I was trying to figure it out and I was trying to find any like English like phrase that was in there because I really wanted to like know the song and I found an English lyric and the entire like I searched throughout the entire like um, I searched on Google and I found the song was Beast by Beast um, yeah so I first discovered K-pop through that and then I kind of just went into it by listening to other groups, so I listened to like Girls' Generation, I listened to uh, Big Bang, GOT7, BTS, and kind of just explored the world after that, the K-pop world after that. Um, honestly, it was kind of a random YouTube suggestion one day. They suggested um, uh, Blood, Sweat, and Tears by BTS, and some of my friend watched it. And then I just kind of fell into a rabbit hole of just like watching the their like music videos the rest of the day. but myself more in the academic area and I know that training like training as a trainee is really difficult and they have so much pressure so I don't want to be a K-pop star <laughs> um yes <laughs> um and I think this is I mean I've kind of known about it for years though kind of like when I first started getting into K-pop you kind of already can see you even you don't even have to be told you can just see from the idols like what the training process is like and it's not so positive like I do I do appreciate that they are training them vocally they're training them how to dance they're teaching them how to build themselves as a brand and how to speak properly in public and things like that but I also think the negative side of that is kind of the strict guidelines that they set for these idols, the unrealistic body standards that they set for these idols, and then the lack of assistance that they give to them. So they there's not much there's not much talk about mental illnesses and physical illnesses and things like that. So I think it just 
it's very difficult for these idols to be able to get help when they are suffering, but yet the companies do things to make them suffer, but they're not willing to help them once they are in that situation. So I definitely think it's a lot of work. I definitely give them props. Um, it's, you know, you have people going from like the ages of like 10 until, you know, my age right now. And it's, it's a, it takes a lot of dedication. You really have to know what you want to do and have the mentality to do it. And I think that's, it's both amazing, but also it's super draining on the idols and the trainees. Like, you know, you, you go through this one thing and there's always like, if you don't make the cut, then that's pretty much it for you. You go back to, I think, school or like finding a job or whatever. And that's just, it, it's, it takes a lot of dedication. And I really respect the idols for that. But I also wish that sometimes that it was made a little bit easier for them, but it's, it is definitely worth it. And, um, probably the dances. What I've noticed in things that go viral is normally dance is the first thing to go viral, whether it's um, like, you know, the Fortnite dances, how people kind of mimic that. Uh, so I definitely think this, the dancing is like the main attraction to people. Um, and then people kind of get to do their own research into the groups and they get to find members who they personally connect to and that's where they make connections. But I think as far as something that catches the eye right away, definitely the choreography. Um, it's different musically, it's different sonically, it's different culturally. Um, and I just think because of that, it's it allowed people to find something new. You know, um, I think what I was saying, like when I got into K-pop, it's because it was something that I've never seen before. And K-pop just has a totally different sound. And just the fact that they dance and sing is already something different. Because a lot of American groups and artists don't dance. like, Or they do, but it's very minimal. It's not this intricate choreography. It's just something very minimal, very small. Um, so I think that kind of helped um, push K-pop into the, into the limelight across the world. Um, but I also think it's just the... Ironically, it's the positivity that comes from K-pop music that has also helped it um, expand, especially with, um, you know, latest groups like BTS, of course, um, you know, promoting messages about positivity and loving yourself, which is the big topic of this generation is being able to love yourself and, you know, accept everybody. And the fact that there are groups that are using their platforms to actually promote those messages, which many... Unfortunately, many celebrities don't use their platforms to promote things like that. I think that also helped K-pop, you know, expand, and I think that helped it help blow it up into this big thing. Yeah, I'm familiar with it. Um, it's a genre from Korea, um, based on pop music, and I think it, from my perspective, I think it involves a bit more than just Korean culture because I've heard that there are artists that are also not Korean but that are involved in K-pop groups. Um, so I think it's more of a, like a cultural movement than it is a genre. I think it's more of a, an aesthetic um, and a sound, but it's not really um, just a genre, you know what I mean? It's more of a concept that, that um, any artist can produce, you know, K-pop. You don't have to be Korean, but it does stem from there. Yeah, I do know what is K-pop, yeah. Do you know what it is? Oh. Hmm. How should I say that? It's, it's some kind of music genre from Korea. Yeah. But I don't know how it became a genre. Yeah. So personally, I think I love the aesthetic of K-pop. I actually really, really enjoy the music videos. I love, I love the it that the artists look, the way that they dress. I'm really interested in it. But um, I don't share the same fandom, I think, that a lot of people really invest in do because I personally don't know where to start. I don't really listen to that much K-pop. Like I, I only know Dean Hayes. I, I know like very few, and I've, I, I, those are the people that I've listened to. I've heard, of course, of the bigger groups, um, but I haven't listened to them. Um, so aesthetically, I love K-pop. Um, I love the the production as well, the way it sounds. Um, I love the way the voices are processed, and you know, because I'm a really big fan of pop music and R&B and things like that, and. 
for me, it's something, um, you know, really interesting that they can blend those elements, you know, those cultural elements from other places, but make it their own through their language and through their expression. Um, and I especially love like the styling um, and all those things. I don't know, it's really interesting how Korean culture has sort of adopted all these things and uh, made them their own. I think I like some Korean art. I think I don't like all like a lot of K-pop, but I like I like Korean rappers like Keith Ape and like Jay Park, which is Korean. Um, and I like Korean R and B, um, like Dean. But I feel like I haven't delved enough into what's considered like mainstream K-pop or even like underground K-pop to like say like I really enjoy K-pop. But I say like I like. Korean artists and I like uh, Korean rap and R&B, but I wouldn't say like I'm a huge fan of K-pop. But I, I think it has some good music that I've heard from other people and stuff like that. But it has some stuff that I do like. Ah, uh, don't ask me. <laughs> <laughs> I hate K-pop. To be honest, yeah, I really hate K-pop. Oh, hmm. As I'm a Korean person, I know a lot of things going on in Korean pop culture, like, uh, industry, is really dirty. Like, if you know a little bit about the K-pop industry in Korea, you will freak out and, okay, this is not the thing we should do. This is not what we expected. Like, they look good, like, when do the, uh, like, when they, like, comes to TV or shows or concerts or any shit. But when they're like inside, like the inside of the industry is shitty, shitty, shitty. Like it's all about money. Like, and they're like things. Yeah, that's the reason. Yeah. <laughs>